So by the title of today's video, you can obviously tell that I'm going to be talking about indie nail polish brands. And pretty much everywhere else, um, indie means independent and it's no different for nail polish. We're talking about um, small operations of like 1 to 10 people making nail polish and selling it for profit. So we're going to start off with a few basic questions, and the first one is, what exactly is an indie brand nail polish? And obviously I've already explained what indie means, but in the nail polish world, this usually kind of started out as like one person, and they started out making frankens, and then they started using um, like glitters and pigments and all kinds of other things to kind of build their own nail polish brand. Once they found out that people were interested in what they were doing, they started selling them. Um, a lot of the indie brands grew up on like Etsy or um, Big Cartel, things like that, um, kind of like free shop services. So a lot of the indie brands that you like might know now started out as very small like Etsy um, shops. So there's a couple terms floating out there um, about like what indies are. There is frankening, indie, or hand-mixed lacquers, and all three of those things kind of mean different things, um, but indies obviously cover like any independent nail polish brand. Frankening is an entirely different thing. It is essentially mixing two or more already made nail polish lacquers together to create a new color. Hand mixed lacquer is different than frankening in the idea that you are using raw ingredients to create something new rather than mixing pre-made um, polishes to create a new polish. Instead you're using like suspension based glitters, pigments, micas, those kind of things to create an entirely new product. The evolution of the indie polish boom kind of has happened over the last two years and People have been frankening their own creations and like mixing their own polishes for their own colors for years, but it wasn't really until Linderella, as I understand it, started selling her glitter polish creations that the idea of mixing these things and creating polish for money actually kind of like took off, that an individual person could do it, not just like a corporation. For a long time, Linderella kind of had a corner on the market of indie glitter polishes, but as demand for her polishes increased and her popularity increased, um, she couldn't keep up with supply and demand. So the market was essentially flooded with tons of other girls who realized that they could make money filling the void of demand that Linderella's products had created. So all of this flooding of the market and um, new indie polish makers created a lot of secretiveness about suspension base and solvent resistant glitter sources and it led to a whole lot of drama that I'm sure the nail world is not really proud of, um, but it was kind of crazy there for a while. But luckily it has died down now and it's no longer really a problem. Glitter sources are pretty prevalent. You can pretty much ask and somebody will tell you um, because there are so many people making them at home for themselves now. It's not a secret anymore. So a lot of the drama surrounding um, Linderella and her polishes kind of leads me into my next topic, which is good and bad business for indies. So obviously if you are trying to sell something to someone, you want to present a good business front and a lot of the indie polishes, even though they are made by singular people, are extremely professional and they really can compete with brands, in my opinion, like OPI and Orly and things like that. I will list some of the super professional brands um, that were started by like one person in particular and they have grown to be really nice high quality brands that um, have a range of polishes and really have their brand marketing down. Unfortunately, there are also a lot of indies who don't present a personal or don't present a professional approach to their business at all and they make it much too personal and they kind of have temper tantrums and all that kind of stuff and that's awful. You don't want to do that with any business. So make sure that the indie brand, indie brand polish that you're buying, you are going to get good customer service and that they have a good professional um, like backstory, I guess, and experience with other um people who are buying polish. And you can find out that by, if you find an indie polish brand that you like, um, go ahead and Google some swatches of it and bloggers will definitely be 100% honest about their opinions with the brand even if they receive samples. I'm really proud of the nail community for, I feel like most of the reviews that are done in the nail polish community are extremely honest. Um, and people aren't afraid to say bad things even if they get PR samples. Like there was a whole bunch of drama with an OPI polish recently and bloggers, even who ones who like received the entire collection for free, were really honest and said this polish sucks. And you know, if that makes you lose your PR samples, fine. But you know that you're being honest with your readers and that's super important and I'm really proud of the nail community for that. So, gold star for you. But yeah. Aside from my rambling tangent about honesty, um, good and bad business practices 
um, do your research, find out which brands are good, which brands are bad, which brands have drama, which ones don't, and Google swatches, absolutely. Now that I have sort of bombarded you with a short history lesson about indie polishes, I am sure you are wondering where the heck can I buy these, what do they look like, that kind of thing. And I will list a whole bunch of um, indie brand nail polishes, nail polish shops, um, the most popular ones that I find down below. Um, and yeah, go check them out, see if you like any of them. Again, Google swatches. Um, I'm also going to list a couple like websites that sell multiple brands, like Lorao and Harlow and Co and places like that. Um, so there are international ones that ship internationally and all that jazz. So even if you don't live in the United States, you can still enjoy the indie polish goodness. So I hope this video answered at least a few of your questions about indie brand polishes. And if you have any more questions, please absolutely leave them in the comments below. I will do my best to answer them or refer you to um, articles or blog posts that can answer them for you. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. And yeah, I will see you next time, and thank you for watching. Bye.